All right, I do apologize. That was my roofer that was finishing up the roof. And um, I mean, I'm sorry, I normally would never let nothing interrupt ministry, but I knew they was trying to get paid for what they did. But uh, we just thank the Lord again for opportunities. Amen. It's a privilege to be alive because when I look back over my life and a lot of stuff I've done by rights, I should be dead. I mean, a lot of you all can probably look and say the same thing. A lot of stuff that was just ungrateful, uh, just so sinful and hurt a lot of people in the process and didn't realize I was hurting people because I was being selfish. I walk in the spirit of selfishness and it was all about me. Amen. And I look back over life and I just caused so much hurt. And I promise God when I gave my life back to him 18 years ago that people I misled, I'll go get them. And I fought hard. But I had my battles along the way. I had my ups and downs. I had my pitfalls. I had my times I wanted to throw in the towel. I had my times I wanted to just give up on everything. And and But God wouldn't let me go. Even though I tried to let him go, he wouldn't let me go. His grace is truly sufficient. Amen. And a lot of you all can look over your life and say the same thing. Same thing that when you know you didn't give your best, God still gave his best. Amen. So I appreciate him so much for these platforms because I'm not a person that like attention. I love talking about God. I love preaching the gospel. I preach the gospel wherever I'm asked to preach it. But just to stand up and talk, stand up to be recognized, I don't care for that. Amen. But when the anointing is heavy on my life, I can stand in front of Barack Obama and preach the gospel and will not sugarcoat the truth at all. But if you had me just go in there and speak in front of Barack or somebody else, I'd be like, y'all can't find nobody else. It's different when the power of God is on your life. So I have never been a person that liked the spotlight. Titles are great if God give you a title. God gave me a title. I didn't want the title. I knew God gave it to me because I didn't ask for it. Amen. The Bible says, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God and in due season when it's right timing. God is the one that exalts us, that lifts us up. When you are chasing after something and you desire something, nine times out of ten, you want it for the wrong reason. And it becomes selfish reason, not what's for the best of the kingdom. When you really want to do God's will, you surrender and say, Lord, what is your will in my life? What is it that you will have me to do? There's too many people that went out and got licensed, whether it's on the Internet or found some preacher to license them. And God never called them to do it. Amen. So you're walking under a false anointing. You're not walking under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You're walking under an anointing that you gave yourself and you're taking God's glory. Amen. But God will still use you. Because did not you know that God is the only boss that will fire you and still use you? You got to understand that. I think Pastor Corn said that one time. My friend, Sister Angela Gorn, showed me that video. He is the only boss that have fired you and still use you. Amen. So it's an honor to be able to share any platform, to brag on the goodness of the Lord, to share his glory. Amen. To share his love to you guys and let you know how much God loves you. I'm telling you, I did some low down stuff and near death several times. But God, but God had a roof fall on me and a house fire got burned down my back and on my chest. Amen. Don't been near wrecks or been in car wrecks. The enemy tried to take me out of here. But God, some of you guys have fought cancer and survived. Some of you guys have been shot and survived. Some of you guys have been at the brink of death and came back. But God, some of you guys have lost loved ones and think you weren't going to make it. Thought you were going to lose your mind. But God, God is a deliverer. He's a keeper. He that never slumbers nor sleep keepeth us. The true and living God, not Buddha, not Muhammad, not the God that somebody got picked them up and take them somewhere. But the God that picked us up and took us somewhere. That's the God we serve. Amen. So just want to come on the night. Amen. We just talked earlier about um, counting it all joy, rejoicing in the Lord, no matter what you're going through, letting patience have her perfect work. That we just discussed on Facebook out of the book of James, uh, chapter one, verse two through eight. Talking about not being a double-minded man, amen, being faithful and steadfast in what you believe God to do, stand on the word of God no matter what you're going through in life and never lose your praise, never lose your worship, no matter what the enemy throw at you, you don't stop your praise because the, the Lord God we serve inhabits the praises of his people. The devil's job is to get you to shut your mouth and speak against what God's word said. He wants to speak 
the negative things against what God's word said because he understands that death and life is in the power of what you say. And that by faith, when you speak, angels move on your behalf. Amen. So his job is to get you to contradict what God's word says. But our job is to let him know he can't do it. Amen. I love my bishop always say, he know that I know that he know that I know, that I know that he know that I know, that I know that he know that I know that he know that God is real in my life. Amen. God is real in my life. Amen. So that was a time you couldn't have paid me to get on here or any social media because I didn't want my friends to see me like this. I, didn't want my, I was ashamed of the gospel. And how God broke me out of that one day. I was in church and I had my hands up, lifted high, crying and praising the Lord. And a classmate of mine walked in. And I brought my hands all the way down like this. And I heard the Lord say, you ashamed of me. I said, no, Lord, I ain't ashamed of you. And when you're in the presence of God, the truth is always revealed. You ain't got to wait on the sound. I saw myself being ashamed because I worried about what my classmate thought. And God said, you deny me before man. In other words, you're ashamed of me. I deny you before my father. I lifted them hands up so fast. I began to worship God. And I'm at a point now, I don't care. Or I'm not concerned what people think about me. I'm concerned about making it into the kingdom. I really am. So, yeah, in life, in our human form, our human nature, we want people to like us. We want people to care. We want people to be, uh, pat us on the back and say positive and good things. I want Jesus to do that. I want him to care. If I do right by him, he'll give me the right people that care. Sometimes we hold on to people that we should be holding on anyway. But if I do right by him, he'll give me the right people that care. Amen. So we bless the Lord forevermore. Because God is just that good. He's just that good. So what I want to do, if the Lord permits, is come out of the same book that I came out of, amen, in the book of James. But instead of the same verse of chapter, verse 2 through 9, or 2 through 8, I want to come out of verse 19, uh... We're going to jump. We're going to do verse 19 through 27, but we're not going to do all of them. Is that, that okay? I guess it is. Y'all can't answer right now because I'm not live. <laughs> but we be, we will be live soon. Bear with me. The webcam is here. Hey, man, I just got to get it set up. I'm still new to all this technology. But if any opportunity to get the word out, we're going to do it. So, Father, once again, we thank you for everything that we participate with that glorifies your name. We come before you with a humble spirit, asking you to forgive us for every sin we committed, everything we said that was out of order, everything we spoke in the spirit of error. We bind that demon in the name of Jesus, and we loose the spirit of truth. Father, if we doing anything for self-glory, shut us down. If we doing anything for self-recognition, shut us down. But if we doing it for the right reason, to glorify your name, enhance it, build it up, strengthen it, that you will get the glory. We thank you for every opportunity that we have to praise your name. We thank you, God, for the love you have shown us, and we want to show you that love back by being obedient, how dig into your word and grow in your word and let patience have a perfect work, as we discussed on Facebook earlier. God, we just want to be real. We just want to be sincere. We just want to completely set out to you to show you that we love you in word and in deed. So we thank you for this opportunity to get in your word. So we pray the word that said, not by might, nor by power, but by your spirit. Use me as an organ, as a mouthpiece, that your word will come forth this moment that you will get the glory in Jesus name. Amen. So in the book of James chapter one, verse 19, it said, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak and slow to wrath. That is a scripture I've been standing on for the last month and a half. Been really focusing on learning how to be quick to hear. What I mean by that, there are some people that are great listeners and there are some people are just listeners. I am a just listener. I'm not a great listener. I know two to three people in my whole life that are great listeners. A great listener hardly say anything. They will let you finish the conversation before they even come in. Matter of fact, sometimes it takes them so long to come in, you wonder what they're even listening. But a great listener will not make a comment until you finish. That's why I'm just a listener. A listener is already a step ahead trying to get their statement out before they forget why you still talking about yours. That's just a listener. But I want to be a great listener. I want to be quick to hear. Why? Because so often we react through the flesh and not listening to the spirit of God. And we end up getting ourselves in trouble. As I said on the other channel earlier, a lot of people use the word mistake out of content. 
Mistake is when you walk and bump something and knock it over. That was a mistake by accident. But when you completely, willfully sin, that is a choice. We use mistake like as a, oops, I accidentally slept with that woman. No, I choose to sleep with that woman. So we got to own up to our sins and be like David said, I sinned before D and D only have I sinned. The only way you're going to ever get right with God is be honest with God, something he already know anyway. And we like, we trying to con him like he don't know. You got to be honest with your sin and confess your sin. Did not the word say, if you confess your sin before the father, he'll forgive you of all of them. And not only forgive you, he'll put a no fishing sign out there because he said, I throw them into the deepest part of the sea, never to bring them up again. He got a no fishing sign out there. Say, why are you going out there and fishing in that area? I told you I wasn't going to bring it up again. It didn't happen. Amen. So when we we're focused on being quick to hear, that means we're willing to hear people out and then make a sound statement, then make a sound judgment, then make the right choices. Then we can fall into the proverb when we say God, uh, Psalms of proverb when they say, God, my lip, put a guard over my mouth that I will watch the words that I say because I know now that death or life is in what I say, death and life because we, we have the choice is in what I say. And I don't want to speak spiritual death to anybody. I want to speak life because you told me to edify your people. Amen. So I want to be quick to hear and slow to react. Other words, to walk in the spirit that my flesh won't dominate me and my flesh won't react to how I get treated. Do I feel that? Yes, I do. I feel it often. Amen. But I fight hard every day and the enemy knows that. So he brings obstacles. He brings people. He brings situations to get you to get out of what you have made a commitment to do. Now, sometimes it's self-inflicted. Sometimes it's just our attitudes. Sometimes just our personality because why we have not spent enough time with God and our flesh have not been crucified daily. So our flesh dominates us. No matter how righteous we act, no matter how much we speak in tongues, no matter how holy we act, when we allow the flesh to dominate by not getting in the word of God to crucify the flesh, not fasting enough, not praying enough, not laying in God's presence. Church on a Wednesday and a Sunday by itself is not enough. You got to spend every day in some form or fashion with the Lord, whether you rise up early in the morning or whether you lay down late at night. And better is best to do both. But you got to spend time with the Father in order to crucify the flesh. They had a sign on a church post one time that says, one week, W-E-E-K, without Christ makes one week. W-E-A-K. That is a true statement. As you advance in God, as you grow spiritually, you'll find the less time you spend with God, the more time you become adjusted to the world. But the more time you spend with God, you'll find yourself not affected so much about what the world do. Because why? Now your affections on things above. You're trying to get to heaven. You're trying to please God. So when we are working on being quick to hear, we're working on not only quick to hear what the humans are saying to us, but they in Revelation, they that have an ear, spiritual ear, quick to hear, slow to speak, they that have an ear, let them hear what 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 the Spirit had to say to the church. Well, well who's the church? We the church. It ain't talking about the building. It's talking about us. We the bride, we the bride of Christ. We are the church. Amen. So we ought to have an ear to hear. You can't have an ear to hear if you don't listen. In the military, they say you cannot communicate and transmit at the same time. Someone got to be listening while someone is transmitting. But in society, we overlap each other in frequency all the time because while one is talking, the other one cut them off while they talk and get their point across. And there's no true listening. There's a lot of verbal conversation at each other. But a lot of times the strong message is missed because everybody trying to get their opinion across. So we, we got to focus on being quick to hear. And I fail this. I fail this one so often. But I'm working so hard to get better in it. Be quick to hear and slow to speak. Amen. And the Bible said, uh, slow to wrath. Now, one of the fruits of the Spirit is temperance. And one of them is long-suffering. Amen. Temperance means self-control. It means not quickly angered. Amen. Long suffering means I don't have to deal with you. I don't have to like your ways, but because I love you, which is the first fruit of the spirit love, I put up with you. Amen. We got to learn to endure with each other. Amen. We we're talking about that earlier in Count It All Joy, building up patience. 
We have to learn to endure with each other, persevere with each other, amen, and not be so easily angered. I know people quote this scripture out of content. This is what the Bible say, if you get angry, sin not. No, the Bible say, be ye angry, but sin not. I said, no, that ain't what it meant. God didn't tell you to be angry. It might have put it out that way, but you got to look at the Greek understanding of it. God didn't give you permission to be angry. Matter of fact, he said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. But what he gave you permission is, he said, if you basically get your flesh, get the best of you, and you get angry, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Get it right. Get it right that moment. Don't put it off to tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised. Don't go to bed mad and angry. Because you know what mad is? Mad is unforgiveness covered up. Mad is unforgiveness covered up. They say I'm just mad, but you're mad because you ain't let it go. You ain't let it go because you ain't forgave. It's unforgiveness covered up. That's fresh off the press there. He just gave me that. It's unforgiveness covered up. Amen. So when it said quick to hear, uh, quick to hear, slow to speak, you ain't always got to get your point across. Sometimes the best communication has been a good listener. I'm learning that myself. But it says slow to wrath. Don't get mad about every conversation. Don't get mad, help me, Lord, about everything somebody say to you. Take criticism. Don't make it right or wrong, but learn to be patient with what other people think and just pray for them. It's not important. Humility says, humility says, you don't have to prove yourself right all the time. Sometimes you take wrong. Once you told a person the truth and they don't want to receive you, just take wrong and let it go. See peace. But you can't make people believe what they don't want to believe. If somebody believes something about you and you don't told them the truth and they still saying it, let it go. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth the argument. It ain't worth going to bed bitter and angry. It ain't worth having animosity where people don't speak to each other for years. And until they want them dead and they had to cough and cry and say, I'm so sorry. It's too late. They don't hear you. Let it go. So it says, for the wrath of man work it not. You get that? The wrath of man work it not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. I got my glasses on because I want to be able to break that down for you guys. Uh, superfluity of naughtiness. Ain't no sense to fake it because I can't read it. Because I can't see without my glasses right now because it's dark down here. And I came down here for some reason. My internet went out upstairs. It wouldn't pick up and never done that before. It did that on my Facebook post. And I'm like, man, what's wrong? Internet never done that before. But it says... Lay aside all superfluity of naughtiness. And I know that dealing with wickedness and things like that, right? I'm sorry I can't break it down because I really can't see it that close. Uh, and say, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Other, word, other words, let go of all this sinful nature. Let go of all this bitterness, this attitude, and all these things that cause division and discord that God says he hates. Let go all those things and allow the engrafted word, the truth of life, the word of the living God to abide in you. That the scriptures say, hide the word in my heart that I won't sin against thee, God. Let the word be real in your soul and it'll cost you to seek humility. It'll cost you to seek peace. It'll cost you to love them no matter what. It'll cost you to pray for them that do you wrong. It'll cost you to do the things according to what? The word of God. Why I say the engrafted word? Because the engrafted word... When the word of God is hidden in your heart, before you sin, before you make that choice, there's a connection. There's a conviction that say, don't do that. Don't do that. Now, God give us free will. It's up to you to choose to or not to do. It's your choice. But you can't say, I didn't know. Because the Holy Spirit will convict you. Why? He's the spirit of truth. He will guide and lead you in what? All truth. So within you, even if you lie to yourself, because the Bible said the heart is deceitful. You can lie and convince yourself, but deep inside, you know when you're wrong. If it's no different than a child that walked to a socket, and before they touch the socket, they're looking back and see if you're looking. They know they're wrong. The spirit of truth always reveals you wrong. Amen. So lay aside all these things and allow the engrafted word that is able to save your soul to keep you in the right standing with God through the process of being quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to rap. And this is the key part to what we're getting to today. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves, deceiving your own selves. There are so many people that brag on other people saying, oh, they can quote them scriptures. Oh, man, they know that word. I disagree with that. 
why I disagree. They may know more than me. They may know more than you. But the Bible said we're forever learning. So they don't know the word. They just know more than us. Because we always got room to grow. When you begin to think you know everything, that means you're telling God I have no more room for growth. You may know more than me. I may know more than you. They may know more than all of us. But we all forever learning. We're forever progressing. We're forever maturing in Christ. So to be a doer of the word, so many people love to brag on people that quote scriptures. I tell people all the time, just because you quote scripture don't mean you're living right. The devil know the word and he trembles at the name of Jesus. But just because a person can quote scriptures don't make them a doer. Hey Amen. A lot of people are hearers and they can quote them back at you, but they don't know how to be a doer. And that's the difference. So while we're learning to be quick to hear and slow to speak, it's teaching us how to be a doer. It said, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding the natural face, beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholding himself and go it his way and straightway forget it what manner of man he was. Other words, in church, you hear the word, oh my God, I feel bad about that. I need to do better. And as soon as he walk out of church, it forgot like he forgot everything he just heard. He go right back to the life of the world again because he had not learned how to walk in the Romans 12 and 1 when it says, I beseech thee, brothers, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which yields your reasonable service. But he, but he did walk in Romans 12 and 2 when it says, and be not conformed, but he was conformed. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of his mind. He didn't let the word be real in his heart. He didn't practice on being quick to hear and slow to speak. And so his mind was never renewed. His heart was never right. And he was a hearer and not a doer. And he was still conformed to the world instead of letting the word conform the world to him. Amen. So it goes on to say, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continue it therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. What man is that? The one that's a doer of the work, one that is a doer of the word of God, not one that's a forgetful hearer. Got a lot of them in church, but the one that's a doer. Amen. Everybody say amen. And the louder they get, everybody say amen. Don't really mean amen. Everybody say, man, walk in dry, leave out dry, if you know what I mean. Hey, Amen. It got to be real. And once it becomes real, you'll see the manifestation of God's glory. Hey, Amen. So, it goes on to say, if any man among you seem to be religious and bridle not his tongue, allow the Holy Spirit to put a guard over his mouth, Allow the Holy Spirit to tame the tongue. Because the scriptures say no man can tame the tongue. It's full of deadly poison and evil. Only the Holy Spirit. And yet you still got to yield to the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit. Because see, when people say it's okay to curse and say you say, that's a lie. The Bible says, how can bitter water and sweet water come from the same fountain? How can a man bless God and curse man who is made in the image of God? With the same lips, he said, "Ought not so to be. So cursing can be negative conversation towards that person or profanity. And even the world tells you profanity is wrong. It's looked at differently. So how can you be in a woman or man of God and speak negative toward someone that you say is your brethren? And the Bible says, by the love we have for one another, by this, men shall know that we are his, his disciples. So how do we believe it's okay to curse people out and still say you're full of the Holy Ghost? Cursing is a choice. I give an example. What's in you come out of you, right? So a man think it, so is he. And whatever a man think it goes into the heart. I always say if you hear it and you entertain it, you begin to believe it. You believe it, it goes into your heart. And if you believe it, you begin to speak it. Because the Bible says what comes out of the mouth comes from the abundance of the heart. So whatever comes out of your mouth, it was just the truth. I ain't mean to say that. I ain't mean that what I said. No, you may not meant. No, you meant what you said. You may not meant to say it, but you meant what you said. Because if it came from the mouth, it came from the heart. That's what the scripture says. So, 
when you say you've been delivered, I used to cuss like a sailor. Everything out of my mouth was nasty. MLB did, hold this, it didn't matter. I was very disrespectful, but never cursed around my children and never cussed around senior citizens. My mom had never heard me curse, my children ain't never heard me curse. But people that was on my same level, I had a mouth that was nasty. But when I got delivered, this is how you know you're delivered. Go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, stump your toe. You'll find out what's in you. If you feel the Holy Ghost, you just, oh, Lord Jesus. But if you got hell still in you, <laughs> hell coming out. <laughs> hell coming out. You can believe that. So you can fool yourself, but you can't fool God. Amen. <laughs> so if any man among you seem to be religious and bright or not his tongue, but deceive it his own heart, because the heart is very deceitful, this man's religion is vain. That's what the word said, not me. But this is the answer God gives us for that. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. Is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. Amen. And to keep himself unspotted from the world. Did you not know the Bible said he's coming back for a church without spot or blemish? That's without sin. Oh, man, how you going to say that we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and we all got sin in our life? Even though it may sound strange, there's a difference between you mess up in sin and still repent, then willful sin and you don't repent. See, every time you repent, God is faithful to forgive you, throw it in deeper part of the sea. But something we keep doing and we lie to ourselves like we ain't done it, yet the truth is there. And we continue to do it without repentance. That spots that can't only can be washed out through the blood. And so when we are to visit the fatherless and the widows, we treat senior citizens like they dirt. I don't care what they did to you. It only counts what you do to them or what you do for them. We're supposed to help them because one day we're going to get there and we're going to want somebody to help us. So we're supposed to visit them. That's why it's important to have nursing home ministries. That's why it's important uh, to go visit those in your church that can't get out to encourage them. Whether you take communion or where you uh, just build them up in the Lord, just go by there and read the Bible to them, make sure they write with God before they leave this world. Those things we're supposed to do. That's pure religion. Pure religion looks out for the body. Pure religion looks out for others. The scripture says, He that desires to be great must first be a servant. In order to be a servant, you got to put your knees aside and put the knees of others before your own. So you can't have a self righteous spirit. And you can't have a self centered spirit. You got to have a spirit that benefits the body of Christ. That's why in the nine gifts of the spirit, the one they told you to desire the most is prophecy. Why? Because prophecy is the only gift out of the nine that builds up the body of Christ as a whole. The rest of them are individual gifts that may work for individuals. Amen. But prophecy builds up the whole body as a whole. And he said, if you're going to desire any, desire that one. Amen. So we bless the Lord. An opportunity to share a word with you tonight. We bless the Lord. An opportunity to brag on him. And we bless the opportunity and pray that something that was said. That will help you along the journey. Something that was said will give you strength another day. To build you up a little bit more. To take you to a place you have never been. We all looking to go deep. I'm looking to get there. And I hope you can push me to get there. And I hope I can push you. We in this together. Amen. We pray that this ministry keeps being supported. And I told the Lord. I believe him for over 5,000 5, subscribers. I do. It's not about me. It's not about me bragging and saying I'm going to get this. It's about the word going out. Cause know how I look at it? If I got 5,000 and they got 1,000 each supporting them and they got 1,000 each supporting them, you know how many people the word get, the word getting to? It blessed me that I got co-workers that say they wives listen to me. Not because it's me, because they're getting the word. Whether they already know the truth, just anybody listen to the word, or whether they're in a church that's true religious and they need to hear the truth. I am very transparent. I believe in being honest and straightforward. I believe in prosperity, but I believe in the truth. It's one thing to preach prosperity and build up the people of God, have false hope for nothing but things of this world. But people got to set their affection on things above and not just beneath. They got to set their affection that one day that spirit going to leave that body. And there's only two options, heaven or hell. And we got to preach sin as well. 
because we got to make people accountable or knowledge to the fact that these sins, Galatians 5 and 19 talk about, because verse 21 say they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Revelation 21 and 8 talks about that they won't get the kingdom of God. First Corinthians talks about that will cause you to miss the heaven. We got to let people know that I don't care how religious you are and how much you go to church. If you are willfully committing these sins, you fall in the category when Jesus said, depart from me, your work of iniquity. I know you're not. You can't get comfortable in religion. You can't get comfortable in a denomination. You can't get comfortable in just your pastor or whoever there. You got to get more comfortable in God. And you can't get that comfortable where you get comfortable in Zion. That's why the old spirituals say, what's the matter with Zion? Zion don't pray like she used to pray. Zion don't sing like she used to sing. Zion don't preach like she used to preach. What's the matter with Zion now? In other words, what Zion, Zion represent the church? What Zion keep letting that happen to stop them from giving God his due glory? You got to stay focused. This is a battle to the end. And we need each other. I need you. And I hope you need me. We got to push each other. We got to push each other in Christ. Amen. So I pray to God that you continue to support the ministry and you spread the news to other people. Pay it forward. Pay it forward that souls will be saved. Have that desire to see that none perish. Have that desire to see all come to repentance. Have that desire to see your white brothers, your black brothers, your Asian brothers, your Mexicans, your Hispanic, your Italian, your, your French, your Greek, your Haitians. It doesn't matter. All nationalities of the world. Because Jesus said he wished that none should perish and all come to repentance. We got to learn to get along. We trying to all go to heaven, but we can't get along on earth. We got to learn that we serve and worship we're supposed to. The same God. So you should have the desire to spread this word. Get it out so everybody will get to know Jesus. I'm going to heaven. I ain't letting nobody stop me. I hope you have the same mentality. Continue to support this ministry. Hit subscribe. Hit like. Make your comments. I don't know how it really works, but I heard it works some kind of way. I don't know which way it works. I just want the word out. Amen. So if you got comments, comment. You got something you want to hear us talk about, please comment. Be glad to talk about it. Be glad to teach on it. Whatever I can do to help the ministry grow, to help you grow. Amen. So subscribe, hit comment, like, um, whatever thing they say. Amen. And I have a, a TikTok. I'm just, I just started today trying to learn a lot about it. It's on the Floyd Downs. And I started on Facebook on the Floyd Downs as well. I started a ministry there where 7 o'clock nightly I come on to Facebook, 8 o'clock nightly Central Time. I come on to uh, YouTube. That's Monday, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, and Friday. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, we will come on, praise the Lord, and, and to give a word to encourage the people of God. I hope you will support the ministry. I hope you will pass it forward. Hey, Amen. I have a, another ministry called Glad. We only have like 20 something people in there, and we've been doing Glad for over 10 years. Hey, Amen. So we just thank the Lord for an opportunity. It feel good to know that. I'm doing a work for the Lord because the Bible says how beautiful are the feet that them that teach this good news, teach this gospel. Amen. I just want to be pleasing to God. And songs say, I just want to see your face. Yes. I just want to feel your heart. That's what I want to feel, God's heart. I want to feel the heartbeat of the Lord and the heartbeat of his people and have a love for his people greater than I can ever imagine. And I want to make it in. So support the ministry, please. So hit submit, subscribe, submit, comment, whatever the things you say. Amen. And, and let me know how you think about the ministry, what I can do to help better it. I ain't going to go against the word of God, no matter what you say anyway. But if it can help me get better, I'm still learning too. If it can help me get better, help me, help each other. Spread the good news to the word of God out to the people in the communities, out to people, those that are lost. Amen. And I love to close with this. Something good is about to happen. Something God is about to take place. Something good is about to happen. Something Don't say it if you don't mean it. Something God is about to take place. That's a faith talk. I believe that with my heart. I expect at any time at 3713 Main Street in Mars Point, amen, that one of my loved ones is going to bust that door wide open and come running to that altar asking what must I do to be saved. Amen. And if you don't have a home church, we welcome you to come visit. Go where the Lord leads you to go. Not, not, not advertising for church. I'm advertising for souls. Go where the Lord leads you to go. But if you don't have a home church and you're looking, come visit us and see what the Lord tells you. 3713 Main Street in Moss Point, Mississippi, under the leadership of Bishop Kelvin D. Bolden. Come and see what the Lord say for you. We have service at 9 o'clock. We have 8.30 prayer on Sundays. Service at Sunday school at 9 a.m. Regular service at 10.30 
Amen. At nine o'clock, we feed the children the word of God in the back and natural food, breakfast. Amen. On Wednesday night, we have six o'clock prayer with Word of Life Bible study at 6.30. Please come out and support the ministry. We got a prayer revival coming up in another week or two anyway. So please, I think next week, next Monday, we got a prayer revival. We go in there, lay before the Lord. Amen. Uh, three days in a row, and we just cry out to God. We just cry out to God. So if you don't have a home church, you just want to come visit. Amen. Be my guest, please. Support the ministry. Support our church. is called IHOP, International House of Prayer. Amen. I'm one of the assistant pastors there. Amen. Our pastor is Bishop Kelvin D. Bolden. Amen. A retired military man, a very anointed man of God. Come out and support the ministry in the way you see fit. Amen. I ain't asking you for no money. We just want your soul right with God. God bless you. Love you. Stay encouraged in Jesus' name.